Hello and welcome to our Module 1 Web and Portfolio Design Checkpoint details. In this particular detail, I'm going to review some of the graphic elements that I'll be looking for in um, your particular final project. And this is more to do with the color theme, um, the background and header, have an image that works with the themes. Um, I am not going to get too much into the resampling issues here at this point. Um, you are required to insert a graphic and a graphic background, so that's what this is all about here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way. And here is my instructional design sample as it sits right now. It is not very attractive, and unfortunately, while we don't really need to necessarily uh, have a huge expertise in web design, we do want to make it visually appealing so that our audience will want to engage in it. If the site doesn't look very nice, people may not even stop to look. So it is important to go ahead and design your site such that it's appealing to other people. So getting that started, I want to take a look here. I've got this red green thing going on up here and my hyperlinks are a little bit of a pale green. I don't have anything in here as a background yet. So those are some of the things that I do want you to focus in on. Once again, inserting a graphic and inserting a graphic background, both a background or a header, have an image. These are all little things that you can do to enhance this particular site. So now I'm logged into my dashboard and I've gone ahead and gone to appearance over here. Um, in terms of this, I could go to appearance and then customize directly or appearance and then customize on the spacious theme. Either way it works. So I'm going to go ahead and load that customization piece and it's going to come along any second. There it is. Okay. So there's a couple of things that I can do to play with color combinations on here. First of all, um, I happen to know that I'm going to be using an image. I don't have it loaded right now, but it's an image that's basically a complementary color scheme. It's a yellow and a purplish blue. I also want this to be somewhat of, of a uh, whimsical kind of friendly little site. So in my particular case, I'm using a big uh, sunflower on mine. Um, whatever works for you in terms of color schemes that supports the theme of your site or color schemes that you feel comfortable using. Those are the things you want to go after. You do want to apply the things you've learned in terms of different color schemes and you want to use those theories to put into practice here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I know that I want my background to be a uh, dark color. So I'm actually going to come under colors here and I'm going to select a dark blue. I'm going to start with this one and then I'm going to go a little bit further down. The reason why we would want to set a background color, even though I'm going to lay an image in on top of this momentarily, if the end audience um, has a slower connection, they will at least see this color sitting in the background before they see the image. So the color loads first because it's a simple piece of code. The image loads second. And so provide something there that gives them a little bit of um, support in terms of, of at least visual uh, visualizing what they need to focus in on, which is your content here. Um, I can click on save and publish as I'm going along. I don't need to. I know that I'm also going to play with the header text, but I'm going to quite frankly wait on that until I get my image in there so that I know what my image looks like. Now I've been playing with this already, so I already have some images that I've uploaded here. I'm going to just choose one that I've already um, uploaded and put in there. But for you, of course, you would click on add a new image, go find that image. You would be asked to crop it so that it fits in this particular box. And um, <clears throat> then you would be able to insert it. I'm going to go ahead and click on save and publish. And so once again, I can see that my image is this large, large sunflower here. My background here. Um, I could probably play with a couple of different things, but in my case, I want to go even darker. So I'm going to come down here. Now, when you get into various shades of um, complementary colors, or if you get into tents, if you're playing with the lighter um, end of the spectrum, it, it can be very difficult to eyeball it because your monitor has some visual nuances that unless you happen to have a very high-end 
monitor with high-end software, you really can't calibrate it to be exactly the color that's going to be on other people's monitors and, and pieces like that. So that's a little bit tricky. At the end of the day, you're going to choose something that's pleasing to you. I'm going to go ahead and click on Save and Publish. And then right out of this particular area, I'm going to click on my background image. I'm going to go select an image. I've been playing with a couple of different versions here. Um, actually, if I choose this one, the uh, problem with this is that it's only 240 by 160 image um, pixels wide. Not nearly enough to cover the entire background. So now I get this situation where it tiles. And that's because the image is so small that it can't cover the screen. The screen is going to be about 1200 pixels wide. So you know that whatever image you want to go for in terms of width, uh, ideally is going to come in a little bit higher than 1200 image excuse me 1200 pixels you can even tell here in terms of these kinds of things um, even if I said no repeat it's just going to stick it up there in the corner I can tile it horizontally which puts it in as a border up in the corner I can tile it vertically which kind of gives me a left bar thing but generally speaking I'm going to get click on tile ultimately this image is not appropriate simply because it's too small so I'm going to click on change image. So the other images I've been playing with are the uh, purple, which is kind of like the complementary to my yellow flower here. And what you can see happening here is that because the image in the top portion of it is very faded out, it gives me a very nice fade down to the bottom where you start to see some of the stuff coming into focus. If I were um, really going to do this particular image um, and this were a real site, I'd probably um, crop it to get rid of some of the paler blue concepts up here and then that way as I scroll down on my page more of the focused ports of the image are going to appear down here um, but they'll appear further up. Um, for the moment I'm going to go ahead and leave that in place. I'm going to click on save. Now, one of the other things I want to take care of here while I'm, I'm here is, let me just pop out and do a refresh so you can see what that looks like. <clears throat> I have some green combinations going on in here, and I have this red-green combination going up here. I don't like this. Um, I don't like the green. I think it's a little bit too pale, number one. And I'm not crazy about the red because I really don't have red anywhere else in my palette. So I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to take care of that red first. I'm going to customize this. And it's back under colors. And in terms of the header text color here, I'm actually going to go to um, a little bit of a purple, maybe even darker. Again, this is something that you have to kind of play with. Notice that my header and my um, tagline also turned to that same color. But basically, I'm okay with that. I'm going to click on Save and Publish. And then there's one more thing I'm going to change about this particular theme, and that is this green portion here. Now, oftentimes within WordPress, you might have to actually dive into the code to change such things as those green options. However, in this particular theme, they give you the option to change the primary color option. And here you're just going to kind of guess at what you want it to be because you can't see both screens at the same time. But I'm going to, I didn't refresh that, sorry. There's that purple, okay. I'm going to go ahead and just try to kind of pick um, obviously, I don't want it to be the same as everything else, but I really can't choose a complementary color because uh, yellow would be too pale. Um, for the sake of this demo, I'm going to go with that color. I'm going to save those options. And then I'm going to come out here and refresh it. And now the pieces that were previously green are now are now purple and in fact when you hover you can see that that has changed. So that sums up some of the quick things you can do to make your design a little bit more visually pleasing and keep in mind that as part of your rubric you do need to have a color theme in here, you need to have an in a graphic um, in the background, you do need to um, 
put some sort of visual combination in here, including the, the image that you create, um, something that, that works together from a color standpoint, supports your content, and is visually pleasing to you. I'll be back with another quick tutorial momentarily.